about red socks. Sleep, sleep when I'm dead. Sleep when I'm dead. Motherfucker wanna come through tripping. Listen, I'ma rip it. I'ma kung fu. Kung fu. Tell him I'm ready if you want it. We're Buddy Tree Zach Show. We are here with a special episode. The cast of the former show, Sharp Bats Fantasy Sets, which one day I'm sure they'll pick up again. Uh, it is Sir Big Time Ten Secure, Cora, and Nick. How you doing, man? All three of you. Well, you know I'm doing good. I know. Yeah. So we have the Eagle fan here, Sir Niner fan. How you feeling? Yeah, I've been bitter, but it's all right. Yeah, it seemed like it's the same story. With the game coming year. up Sunday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cowboy fan here. Yeah, is what it is. Decent year, as far as I'm concerned. Tim, Jets fan. I mean, you were seven and three. Started off well. I think you had a good year, considering you didn't have a quarterback. Twenty twenty four Super Bowl. Here we come, baby. You know what? Uh, that's really what I want to get into. This is a Super Bowl preview show. Uh, this is the only show we're doing. We did a baseball preview show, so let's do a Super Bowl one really quick. Um, Tim, I'm going to start with you, though, before we get into the actual game. Now, your New York Jets. Uh, word on the streets, Aaron Rodgers. Personally, I would call up if I'm a Cowboy fan, and I know they said no NFC team. I am calling them anyway and saying, what will it take? If they say four first-round picks, I am giving them to him, and I'm going to pick up Aaron Rodgers by myself and packing Dak stuff. Not even that I hate Dak. I'm actually a fan of Dak. But I know this is a league like the Rams. You have to go for it when you have a chance. Because I just, it could be another 27 years, 52 in your case. Tim, your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers? Uh, me personally, I would rather the Jets go after Derek Carr. I've I've seen them I've seen them get an old Green Bay quarterback before. Uh, his name was Brett Favre. I agree. It didn't, yeah. it didn't go over very well. I mean, sure, different guy, different circumstances, but Derek Carr, a guy who's never had a defense with the Jets team, with that defense, with the offensive line coming back healthy, with with hopefully the running back halfway through the year will come back healthy. Right. That's a recipe for success. I, I'm I'm with you. I don't care. I don't know how many first round picks it would take to get Derek Carr before they just wind up cutting them. But if there's a chance that we could trade them something to negotiate with them, that's that's what I personally would do. Everything you just rattled off, though, because you're built to win now. Why yeah, wouldn't now. you want Rodgers over Carr? I, I I personally I just think Derek Carr would be a better fit. I don't know. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is, mm. is so much of a, a head case in himself. I think he, he would want too much control over what was happening, where I think the Jets have built a pretty good team on their own type of deal. Interesting. But Derek Carr did cry in a huddle once, and in New York, you will get fucking lambasted if that ever get, get comes out. So you got to also worry about that. Nick, how do you feel about the Rodgers thing? Would you take him? You on my side or Tim's side? I think I would actually take him if I were the Jets, just because of the elite talent in the win now. Um, best quarterback, um, you know, back-to-back -back MVPs, and he, he has a little bit of baggage. I mean, I was watching the Craig Carton show, and he was talking about number one cancer uh, in the locker room. He had Aaron Rodgers, but he has a vendetta. Mm. I don't think he's a number yeah, I don't, one. No, he's actually like teammates love him. Yeah. I think he. I think he would make everybody better. It'd be, you know, easily one of the best defenses he's been with. Uh, you already have Nathaniel Hackett, uh, and I feel like that was obviously a move to be made uh, with the idea of trying to lure him in. I know Denver did it last year and it didn't work, um, but you know, I do think that that was the reason why they did it. And we'll see what happens. Uh, I get the Brett Favre thing, but before Brett Favre got hurt, I mean, they were they were doing eight and, great. Eight and three. Eight and three. Yeah, I think. They, were, they were playing great. So I, you know, I think if if you really want to win now and you really want to make yourself, if nothing more relevant, which the Jets really haven't been, you know, since their ex Ryan years, uh, you all of a sudden become relevant. The rest of the uh, AFC East is very good. I mean, it was kind of like middle of the season you were arguing who was the best division nfc east or afc east uh because both were juggernauts i mean eight eight very good teams yeah uh, I, I would take aaron Rodgers. yeah and you know you also mentioned brett Favre. if you look back at the 08 team the receivers now that the Jets have are significantly better. Aaron Rodgers would be walking into better defense. Uh, Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore are way better than I don't even remember who they had back then. Uh, maybe Lavernius Coles. Was he still there? I could be wrong. Dustin Keller, maybe. Uh, but, <laughs> but regardless, and Rodgers definitely has more left in the tank, I feel. 
than Favre did at that time. Not to mention, if you take two years with Rodgers to take a shot, you're, you'd rather take five years with Carr, but by the time Carr's in that third year, those receivers want to get paid now. So you might lose the team that you built around Carr. So personally, I'd take two years with Rodgers over a six-year chance with Carr. Sir, he ain't coming to you, even though I know you'd love him. <laughs> you'd love everyone at this point because you had your running back throwing passes in the <laughs> NFC Championship. Man. So would you take Rodgers if you're the Jets or not? Since we are New York-based as a show. No, I understand. I understand. Um, I mean, you said Rodgers has a lot of more baggage with Rodgers, but I'd probably go Derek Carr just because, like, you got a lot more pieces around him. I don't know. I'd probably go Derek Carr over Rodgers. Well, you got Rodgers, what, for two more years? Two say? years, you can, yeah. Say, you got Carr for a lot longer than that, so I'd probably go Derek Carr over Rodgers. Interesting, even though we could all agree that if Aaron Rodgers becomes a Jet in the following weeks, Tim will be the first one online buying a jersey. <laughs> that is 100% true. Either way, it's an upgrade uh, from what you had this year. So um, we're going to go around and give each other grade, give teams grades first. Uh, Nick, you're still at like an open grade right now because you're in the Super Bowl. Congratulations. Two times in five years, three times in 17. I mean, F you is all I can say. Eight NFC championships. You know, it's just very frustrating. Uh, sir, what do you give the Niners a grade? Now, keep in mind, you have, you were on your fifth or fourth quarterback. So, what do you think? This year was a success? Um, I mean, success is relative. I mean, because anything more than a Super less than a Super Bowl, I wouldn't say is, like, a uh, successful season. So. Right. But that's hard to do, like, realistically. No, I mean, no, they, you know? they balled out for, for the, the, keys, the, uh, the cards they were dealt. They, the, the team played well, you know what I'm saying? They made some key acquisitions, getting McCaffrey of them, so... It was, it was a decent year. You know it just it just ended ended poor, so... Yeah. Agreed, sir. Great. Yeah, what's your yeah, grade? Give, give about a B. I agree with that. At least they gave you up until the second to last week to watch football every Sunday. I'll still do my Cowboys here. Um, you know, I had them win in the division. They were close to doing it. Mike McCarthy's three years, he's done pretty well. Two straight years of 12 wins. The first year, Dak broke his ankle. Uh, Cowboys made the Elite Eight. You know, it's they kind of were, that's projected where I thought they'd make it. Um, they just, they're very stagnant. Dak did not play well in the San Fran game. And I, like I said, I think da Dak's a top 12 quarterback, top 15 quarterback. So it's not really on him. And you're kind of stuck with him. You got to do what you got to do with Dallas. I'll give Dallas a B as well. Um, I think with one more win, it would have been an A, regardless if they lost in the NFC Championship. But, um, you know, they got to figure something out because it's just been stagnant, running the wheel, same thing. Every fucking year. Uh, Tim, 7 and 10. Speaking of same thing every single year. Man, if we just had a quarterback. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, given <laughs> give, given the way that it started and the injuries to the offensive line, the injuries to the running back, I think any quarterback besides an elite quarterback would have had a difficult time. Even the backup when he came in, he threw for a ton of yards. Still didn't mean that they won the games. He still had a losing record as the quarterback. Uh, C+. plus. <laughs> They, they, made, they made strides in, you know, their draft picks were amazing this year, which is a, a good sign. And hopefully they can improve on that this coming year and on to the future. All right, perfect. Now let's get into the big game and we'll start with Nick for this because, uh, you know, about years ago, Nick decided to choose a team long time ago. And he just said he knew he hated the Giants. So he chose the Eagles in the same division, the early Donovan McNabb days. He saw five NFC championships from 2001 to 2009, one Super Bowl, one Super Bowl lost. After that, he saw Nick Foles miraculously win a Super Bowl and outplay the great Tom Brady um, before Nick Foles convulsed this year. Well, Kayvon Thibodeau did a snow angel next to him. Uh, God rest <laughs> his soul. So, uh, Nick, how you feeling going into this game? What's the matchup you're worried about? And are you excited to face Andy Reid? So, I, there's so many fun storylines, one of them being the Andy Reid storyline, just being a former Eagle. You know, when they were in the Super Bowl, I, uh, sir, we'll just do earmuffs at points when you need to just cover your ears, but earmuffs real quick. <laughs> I, I was hoping that Andy Reid would, would win, you know, the, the Super Bowl he was in with the Chiefs, and they ended up winning because I, I thought Andy Reid is a Hall of Fame coach. Yeah. And the only thing he was missing was uh, that Super Bowl. And, you know, truth be told, you know, early in my Eagles fandom, 
the first Super Bowl against the Patriots. I thought his clock management towards the end of the game was baffling, uh, but they were in it and they were close and they were the favorite team. I mean, they, they you know, it was it was one of those things where I, I felt pretty good about that game and, and they let me down. T.O. didn't, but, you know. Were they was, favored in that game? I don't maybe remember. Was, I, maybe I got that wrong. Maybe they weren't favored. Okay. I, know, I know that Bill Belichick famously kind of went through the parade route. Maybe they were just, you know, okay. go in and everybody, but yeah. they were, Eagles fans were high on that team. Yeah. Um, I would say more confident than they were in Super Bowl 52, which, you yeah. know, ended up being a win against, you know, the great Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Um, I, I'm, I'm back and forth on, on kind of what I, th- you know, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I, I could see the Eagles just completely beating them down like everybody else. You talk about matchups where the number one pass defense faces the number one uh, pass offense, and it's happened two other Super Bowls. And in both Super Bowls, one of them was the Gruden Bowl that Tampa Bay won. They were the number one pass defense. And the second one uh, was actually Denver and Seattle, number one pass defense, won in that one. Both games were won by more than 20 points. So then you look at it, it's like this is the third time it's happening. I could see the Eagles just beating them by 17. At the same time, I look at an Eagles team and I look at a um, I look at a Chiefs team, and you know what? What are the most important positions? Quarterback being the most mm-hmm. important. One of the big advantages that the Chiefs have over the Eagles is quarterback. Um, you know, tight end. You got a generational talent, one of the greatest of all time. Not that that's an important position, but you know, I think the Chiefs have that edge, and I'll give them the edge for for obvious reasons at, at coach too. I think player by player, if you line them up, I think the Eagles have way a way better constructed team. So that's where my confidence comes from. But my fear is that we're going up against one of the great court, probably a, already a Hall of Fame quarterback uh, yeah. and a really, really good one. And, you know, it's just going to be very difficult to, to beat them. So I, I could see the Chiefs winning. I could see the Eagles winning. Gun to my head right now, long-winded answer. Obviously, I'm, I'm flying with the Eagles. I, I, I think the Eagles are going to win. Right. And we'll get to final score predictions at the end. I'll go next since I'm an NFC East guy as well as you. Um, I really thought going into the playoffs, the only NFC team the Eagles would lose to was the Cowboys just because of that division thing. I know you probably wanted the Niners more than Dallas. I know my brother did just because you never know at division games, especially since Dallas did beat them. Uh, The Eagles beat Cooper Rush. Uh, Dallas beat Gardner Minshew. Would have been cool to see a Dak versus Hurts like NFC Championship game. We didn't get it. Now I've been underselling Philly all year, though. I did think they get to the Super Bowl once Dallas got eliminated. You're not, um, you're not the not, only one. You're not the yeah, only one. <laughs> yeah, and, and no, I know. And not to say Dallas would have beat them. I think the Eagles probably would have won, but it would have been one of those fucking nail biters. Um, I've been underselling the Eagles all year. I don't think Jalen Hurts uh, has gotten the respect he deserves. Part of me is that. Um, but, you know, sometimes you got to eat pro. Um, the guys played great. I don't think they're winning because of him, but he is doing everything that he has to do, and there's nothing wrong with that. He's played great. He's He hasn't made a mistake. Um, however, on the other side, it's just... To me, getting Patrick Mahomes at plus money is like Alabama being an underdog. Um, it is just hard not to bet the Chiefs being an underdog because, I mean, it... Patrick Mahomes, to me, if he stays healthy, will be the greatest quarterback we've ever watched. And he's almost there. It is, it's absurd. As good as Brady is, Mahomes and Rodgers do things Brady can't. So I, I, Mahomes can make plays. You saw what he did at 70% last week. It's it's just absurd. Um, I think it'd be interesting if Reed hadn't won yet and the Eagles hadn't won yet. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You go to Philadelphia, you would have burned the city down. Somebody, if they somebody's got to go. Oh, it would have been terrible. Um, I'll get to my final score. The end gun to my head, though, I do. I am leaning towards the Chiefs, um, and that's really not a homer pick. I'm not like that. Uh, I just, no, I yeah, I just, uh, it's so hard to go against Patrick Mahomes for me. And I know the Bucks beat the fuck out of him the one year. It could happen, but um, I don't know, man. We'll see, sir. What do you think? Oh, so you made you made an interesting point before about the. Uh, the Eagles beat your backup quarterback, and then Dak beat the backup. Oh, it's a lot easier to beat a backup quarterback. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm but anyway, I've been thinking about this game. You know, it's it's, it's going to be a good game. Should, but my question is: Is Jalen Hurts really healthy? Because like he mm-hmm. hasn't looked that great in his last couple games. Yes, they've been putting up numbers. They put up a good number against the Niners, but they gave him you know great field position where they just ran the ball on him. And then against the Giants, well, the Giants are you know, weren't 
we weren't world beaters, you know what I'm saying? We could all agree on that. So I don't know if I don't know if Jalen's really hundred percent right now. So like I said, Mahomes, you know the ankle the ankle. I don't know. Good to, as, as you said, good to my head. I'm, I'm probably taking the Chiefs just because that's Patrick Mahomes and like I think he's he's got a little bit more uh more a little bit more health. I don't think Jalen's really right right now. Yeah, and also it's going to get to the point if Mahomes loses this one, you start to say he's not winning them, you know, as opposed to like, wow, he's winning them when he gets there. Because one out of these five years, um, as great as that one in it is, if you want to be in that conversation, you better yeah, start absolutely. winning some of these. Uh, Tim? So I think the biggest issue for me is what the Eagles offensive line can do. If the Eagles offensive line control the line of scrimmage like they have been, basically the whole year, I think the Eagles win the game. Mm -hmm. If they can keep the ball out of Mahomes and that offense's hand, as cliche as that is, that's literally the the route that they have to go if they're going to win the game. And I don't see anything that says that they're not going to be able to do that. Eagles defense can stop Patrick Mahomes too. Is Patrick Mahomes 100% healthy? I don't think he will be. Maybe he'll be 85%. I mean, high ankle sprains take a while to get to come back from. So uh, I'm not putting a gun to my head <laughs> because I'm betting the Chiefs because this is what I did the last time the Eagles were in the Super Bowl. And uh, I bet the Patriots and then the Eagles wound up winning. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bet the Chiefs so I can reverse Juju for my uh, <laughs> Eagles brothers, you know? Wow. What a nice guy. Um, but it's like, you know, we're at 50, 50 here and that's exactly why this is a one point spread, one and a half point spread. It's really going to be, uh, you know what? We don't know what we're talking about. It'll probably be like six to three as a final. Yeah. Everyone's 12, here. 12, three. Like it yeah, was, the last every, time I thought know. it was going to be a high scoring game. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah. it was Bucks, no, um, Patriots and Rams. I think it was. Or yeah. 13, three, you yeah, know, like 12 and, to three or 13, three. I'm like, Oh, it's going to be a high scoring affair. Nope. So, um, some prop bets we'll get to. Um, I have a couple written down. I like uh, Kadarius Tony as an anytime touchdown as a plus 230. And uh, just because you got to pick a quarterback if you're going MVP, uh, Mahomes plus 120. And also, because it's Nick Sirianni and Andy Reid, this is a really weird prop bet, but a non QB pass touchdown is plus 2200. We saw the Philly special the one year. Andy Reid does some weird shit. Sirianni's kind of off the wall as well. And I, I like that as a plus 2200, just a, like a reverse halfback pass or something. I don't know. A lineman throwing a pass. And um, if I had a Super Bowl MVP that's plus 2200, Miles Sanders. Why not? Like I, I don't. That's that's pretty good as far as he's going to be probably their main running back. If Hertz hands these options off, why not Miles Sanders? Uh, Nick, some prop bets. So yeah, I got a couple. Um, and and I I took more of an analytic approach versus some of like the fun dart throws. But I do have a couple of fun dart throws in there too. I mean, I like Juju uh, at twenty two to one to score two touchdowns. Um, you know, I thought that was a good bet before Kadarius Tony basically guaranteed that he was going to play. Um, But I do think that, you know, if if you had mentioned earlier, like weaknesses on the Eagles defense, and and a lot of it has to do with Devontae Maddox being out with a toe issue, but he was getting, the Eagles defense was getting gashed at the middle of the field. Um, You know, you saw the game against CeeDee Lamb uh, against, you know, Dak, absolutely, uh, CeeDee Lamb just absolutely. I think think Dak went 24 of 24 in zone coverage with zone defense that game. That was absurd. The middle of the field is how you definitely beat the Eagles, right. and uh, you know that's why I think Juju is a good a, a good play there. I think their their outside cornerbacks, you know, James Bradbury, Darius Slate, it's going to be hard for like an MVS or or anyone else to really have any kind of uh, success or sustained success in the game. And then obviously Travis Kelsey, and it's like how high is too high for Travis Kelsey, who's already got the record uh, for receiving yards. Um, you know, by a tight end in the Super Bowl receptions, uh, the record just I know you guys are big football fans. Anybody care to guess what the record is for receptions in a Super Bowl by a tight end? I couldn't even tell you, man. Yeah, I would say, so th- I would say four. Okay, <laughs> is there any, any idea by a tight end? Uh, I don't know, bro, say three. nine. The reason I ask, sir, is because it actually happened uh, against the 49ers in 1982. Um, that would be the Cincinnati Bengals, and it was Dan Ross. Uh, 11. 11. Now, 
is 11 out of the realm of possibility for an elite tight end like Travis Kelsey? You know, he, and, and he, the, had, he had 14 against Jacksonville, or uh, no, not Jacksonville. Um, well, it was Jacksonville. I know he had 14, like, I think, in the first playoff game. Yeah. I mean, so you look at it, and like, there's going to be some people saying, well, the Eagles are going to game plan against Travis Kelsey. But you know who else game planned against Travis Kelsey? Every Everybody. Time. Yeah, plays no, right. the Chiefs. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think, and for that reason, I think, you know, an obscure bet, obviously you went Miles Sanders on, on the Eagles side. And I'm, I know I'm starting my bets off very Kansas City heavy, but I got some Eagles ones in there too. But, you know, Travis Kelsey as MVP, I think is a solid bet. It's like last year we saw Cooper Cup do it. And what did Cooper Cup have to do to, to do it is he basically had to have a Cooper Cup game. And I right. think Travis Kelsey – is certainly capable of having a, a Cooper Cup game. So I do like that bet. I don't have the odds on it. Um, it's very it, hard, though, because, like you said, if if they usually give it to the QB, so it's going to have to be a whole worldly game, you know? Right, exactly. I'll, ra- I'll rapid fire these because I have a few, and I have like a just a fun parlay, really based on analytics, if, if you want to try it. So, you know, I, I, I did find it surprising that they've been using Pacheco over McKinnon uh, almost uh, 50% more uh, over the last few games. But I do like McKinnon's over of 19 and a half rushing yards. Uh, obviously, I like Juju's over on 38 and a half receiving yards. Kansas City, fifth most quarterback rushing yards um, in the league, giving up. So give me Hertz at over 49 and a half rushing yards. You know, he had 763, the third most of quarterbacks of this year. You mentioned Miles Sanders, but Kenneth Gainwell has really been their best running back over the last few games, over a hundred yards against the Giants, uh, 60 yards uh, plus against the Niners, but it's hard to kind of gauge analytics in that game because even though it was seven, seven for a lot of it, it was kind of over, you know, when, once, you know, Purdy got hurt, even though, you know, the score still remained close, it was going to be difficult. Um, but I do like Gainwell. His his receiving yards are only over uh, 12 and a half. No team in the NFL has given up more receptions to running backs at, at 107 uh, mm. than the Kansas City Chiefs. So something to kind of play into there. Just those stats alone is a plus two, 2,274. So if you just want to bet those and be done with it, cool. Uh, obviously, I got to throw some anytime touchdowns in there. So give me Hertz and Juju um, at plus 9218. Uh, if you add all of those receiving, reception, all that fun stuff, plus those two anytime scores. And then for the the big one, you can also add Travis Kelsey over seven and a half receptions. If we think it's going to be a high scoring game, and it should, the over under is 50 and a half on DraftKings. And the teams have averaged a 57.2 points per game. Uh, so betting the over makes a lot of sense. People are thinking it's going to be a high scoring game. Then give me Travis Kelsey over 7.5 receptions. If you include all of that in, and I did it in a $5 bet, uh, it is plus 19,415. My most logical bet to me is the over on the Eagles, uh, giving one and a half in the first half plus one Oh five reason being one of the biggest weaknesses for the Eagles. And this isn't like, a cocky comment, but this is just if you've watched the Eagles all season, you know, probably their biggest weakness is they jump out to such fast leagues, they let the teams yeah. play back into it. Uh, they almost become complacent. But the Eagles are one of the best first half teams in football. Uh, so give me the Eagles first half uh, laying one and a half is plus 105. That's that's really the prop bets that I, I like analytically. Right. And who says this doesn't have replay value? Everybody rewind that and it. Go through everything Nick said while you're <laughs> press pause, play, pause, play. Sir, what do you got? Uh, I feel like all my props have been uh, stated already, but the first one, <laughs> I went with this last year. It kind of blew up my face, but you already know, Tails never fails in the coin toss. Give me Tails. <laughs> Even though four out of the last five have been heads, I don't care. Give me Tails. Anyway, uh, but with the it's props. Due. It's due. Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's got to Spoken hit. like Come a on. true gambler. Can't be red for the 50th first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it can. Yo, there's a 50% chance I'm right, all right? Come on now. But anyway, but uh, as you said, uh, Travis Kelsey, I put any, any time score at minus 135. Sprinkle a little bit for two touchdowns at plus 475. You know, and you said, the Eagles are, you know, don't cover the middle. Who who roams the middle? That would be Travis Kelsey. Also, give me over 77 and a half yards. And over six and a half receptions for uh, Kelsey as well. Against Cincinnati, he had seven for 78. Sure. Against sure. Real, real fast, the six and a half, where was that at? I know all mine were on dra- DraftKings. No, it was DraftKings. It was DraftKings. Oh, FanDuel. Mine were FanDuel. I'm sorry. Yours were DraftKings? No, no, DraftKings. DraftKings of six and a half. 
Okay. But uh, yeah, I guess against Cincinnati, he had seven for 78. And against Jacksonville, he had 14 for 98. So Mahomes looks his way early and often, you know. And again, I said the anytime he scored in both games. He had two against Jacksonville, or and he had one against Cincy. So he's he's going to probably find the end zone most likely. For the Eagles side, Nick, you mentioned it. Kenneth Gainwell has probably been their best running back. So give me over 20 and a half rushing yards and also over 34 and a half rushing and receiving yards combined. Again, so I guess he's been he's been putting in work and he's been catching the ball at the backfield for them. So those are the best I like for Gainwell. Another one, total game sacks. If the Eagles pass rush is going to get after it, it's a uh, five and a half is the number for both teams. You know, I don't say, I don't think Jalen Hurts is right, so they they might get a couple sacks off of him. The Eagles might get Mahomes a couple times, so five and a half at uh, even money. And then a couple of ones I was looking at was Mahomes over eighteen and a half rushing yards. Said he might he might have to try to escape that pressure. And uh, also Dallas Goddard over four and a half receptions. He he's had five receptions in, like in each of the last three games, so. It's a good little number to look at. All right. Tim, what do you got? Round it up. And I feel really bad because I think Nick had every single one of the uh, four that I had, but I'll, I'll say it anyway with my reasonings. I mean, Travis Kelsey at m- the most receiving yards in the game is at plus 140. So that's what I went with. Uh, Juju, if the Kansas City Chiefs win, I think is due to make another mill uh, based yeah, on his contract. Sure. So I took both his over three and a half receptions at, at even money and over 36 and a half yards at minus 115. And the final one that I uh, really like, if you think Jalen Hurts' his arm is hurt, then rely on his legs uh, over 15 and a half rushing yards at minus 115. Hmm. All right, that rounds it out. Let's do the scores, what we think is going to happen here. Um, I'll start first. I think that you have two wild coaches who make – it just unconventional moves. I think there's going to be a two point conversion in there some way. I think if you have seven and seven in these box pools, it ain't going to look good at the by the end of the game. I think you're going to have some obscure numbers. I'm actually going to go with. I think it's going to be 33 22 at the end of the game. Eagles will kick a field goal and not recover the onside kick. I'll go 33 25 Chiefs odd score. So I'm expecting something like that. Um, Eagles could win. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think the Chiefs might score like a late touchdown to make it to 33, though. It's not. We will be tuned into this game. I really feel that way. Sir? Uh, I don't know. Uh, this, I said, I would probably say I was, I'm going to go with 31 28. Oof. That's a last minute, last second field goal, or Eagles don't convert to tie it? What are we looking at? 31 28, sir. I don't oh. know. <laughs> Yeah, but this game, that, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 the last time I said that, the last time I thought both teams could score and both have a high score in Super Bowl, yeah, it was thirteen three. So exactly, you can predict all you want. Tim, what do you got? Twenty seven seventeen Eagles. Oh, so he likes the seven and seven, not like me. And, no and, unconventional. Hey, Brent Maher is not playing, so there won't be a missed extra point. That and the under. Sure. And the under. All right, uh, Nick. All right, go for it. Your team, your floor. 31-24 uh, Eagles. I, I think it. You know, we're, it's going to be one of those games that comes down to the end. Uh, I hope it's not. I really pray it's, it's not because, you know, for, so for some people that have, have never seen their team in a Super Bowl, I'm lucky this is going to be my third. But, like, the anxiety you get in watching yeah. your team Super Bowl. Sometimes it's nice to just not watch your team in the Super Bowl. So, but it, obviously, it's nice when your team wins. Uh, sorry, Tim. Um, what are you talking about? Acting like you say it's, 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 you want to watch a team in the Super Bowl. You you get like- anxiety, man. It's it's yeah. tough. It's tough. But I I do think the Eagles are going to win. I, I I feel weird even saying that. I think the Eagles could win big. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked. If they did, I would be shocked, however, if Kansas City won by more than 10 points. I, I just, I don't think it's great, and it's not disrespect to them. It's just, I've watched every snap of every Eagles game this year, and I just think the, there's a reason why Harry Roseman won executive of the year. Um, they're, they're, they're the best team in football. Uh, whatever you want to say about the quarterback and whatever you want to say about anything else, best team. I know Sir disagrees with the quarterback thing, but. I disagree, but, but I've told you why I disagree, but go ahead. It's fair. It's fair. It's fair. Now, Nick, Nick, there, there's a rumor that you've been teaching your son a special quote to say after the Super Bowl. 
Well, my son can't say much of anything outside of wah, uh, <laughs> but he does Sounds like, like cowboy fans. There's two <laughs> things that put a smile on that man's. I'll say three things. Three things put a smile on that boy's face: the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, for some weird reason, curb your enthusiasm, and lastly, uh, football has been something that he's enjoyed watching. So I'm enjoying. I already bought his uh, my first Super Bowl one. Um, yeah. And I also got the Eagles. Uh, they weren't releasing the, the regular jersey with the patch. It was the, those gray special jerseys. So I bought my wife, uh, Jalen Hurts, and I had Devontae Smith after his catch um, against the uh, Niners. I felt like that was the way to go. But uh, <laughs> I did it. I did it. I know. It. I know. I know. But, uh, you know, that's, I'm, I'm excited. You know what? To touch on what Sir was getting at, because I actually agree with Brandon Ayuk, but tough shit. I, I can't stand people who say things like that. Like, we were the better team. You know what? The Niners probably were. But tough shit. The best team doesn't always fucking win. Uh, so, you know, go home, golf. Like, like the Eagles are in it. The Eagles deserve to be in it. And they're there. No, I, they, I, know, like, I, I, didn't take it, I, didn't, I never took anything away from them winning. I'm just saying, it, as I told them before, if I would have liked Brock to play the whole game and see what happens. You know, he gets yeah, down. We have what, Josh though? Johnson, who's been on a million teams. You could say that about in. Any other team in the NFL in any given yeah. year. Yeah, like, you know what? It, it happens. And the Eagles, part of being the best team is being able to take advantage of those situations. I mean, how many times does a backup come in and win the game? Like, like a Josh Johnson could have came in and won the game, but the Eagles were like, all right, fuck, this is our time. Let's just bury them. And they did. That's good coaching. That's a team that takes advantage of the situation. So, like, I can't. Uh, like I can't say like how many, Tim's right. In the last twenty years, the best team probably won the Super Bowl ten times. It's probably half and half. So you know, it's go that. win when you're yeah, go win when you're there. Um, really quick, the Puppy Bowl. I'm going with. I'm I'm going with Team. Where's Ruff. the on this thing? I'm going with Team Rough twenty four and Team Fluff twenty, and the MVP will be Josh Allen Hound. So. Place your bets on that. That's not, that's not the one in the wheelchair, is it? That no, that's, that's my Joey. Pick. That's Joey. Poor guy. I really hope he gets adopted. So, anyone watching or listening, go watch the Puppy Bowl too. Kitty halftime show. Meet the bird doing the uh, overhead on the blimp. It's a really fun time. <laughs> so we out here talking about the Puppy Bowl now, fam. Come on. <laughs> I love you for that. Oh. Everybody have a great Super Bowl. Enjoy. I do think by the time we pass away. Uh, God willing, I don't want to predict if we'll live for 40, 50 years, but I do think the calendar will at some point have this down as a holiday, Super Bowl Sunday, and it should be already in this country. Um, it should be Super Bowl Sunday. It should be a national. Actually, the holiday. Monday should be the holiday, sir, because you know what? I'll take Sunday at this point, just so it's recognized. Like, because even anybody who doesn't watch Super Bowl, what's, oh, Super Bowl Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. It is well known, and it should be. There's a reason why there's a 45-minute halftime show for this, <laughs> you know? So, uh, one day, hopefully, that does become a thing, and maybe they'll give us one day off. So, we can get rid of Flag Day, and then put Super Bowl Sunday. Everybody, enjoy. Final words. Nick, what do you got? It's your team. I got nothing. I'm just going to do this for the rest of the show. All right. Goodbye, everybody.